Hey guys, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my studio. Many of you may recognize this as English paper piecing hexes. Many of us have made at least one of these little flowers or some of us have made entire quilts out of it. But today I want to show you a different way to sew them together. Several months ago, one of you was very kind and shared a link to a video that showed how to do a different way to sew together any of your EPP, English Paper Piecing Projects. I'm going to link down below to the video. It was by Pat Bravo, and she showed how to do an invisible feather stitch. And that's what I'm going to show you today. I also put down a link below to my English Paper Piecing Hexi playlist where I've showed different parts of putting it together and, and this is one of the projects that I'd use as my example. When I stitched these together, I just did the basic whip stitch. Now, because this was just something fun, I was just gonna make a little, like a little placemat or dinner mat or something out of this project. I didn't switch up my threads. I did use blue even though it was in the white and I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but I can see it very clearly. I can see the shadow of the blue. I don't see much of my stitches at all through there. There are some that are here and there that are a little bit big, but I wanted to try out this new stitch. So let's go ahead and try out this invisible feather stitch and see how it looks. Before we get going, there is the basic whip stitch. You can see that it just goes around and around and around on the seam like that. I went ahead and did a little practicing on it before I went and showed you. And I did learn a couple things before we get started. I just want to give you a couple little tips. As I was stitching, some of these seams are really nice. Let me see which one was the one. Now this one, see how you can see some of my stitches in there? That's because I didn't pull the threads tight enough. And I'm also putting a little bit of pressure on these seams. But on these, you do not really see them. You can kind of see where the thread's gone in and out. But as you take out your papers and you give it a nice steam press, you won't see those little indentations where, as you're going, you'll understand what I mean, but you can see where the thread goes in and out, but you can't see the actual thread. I also brought out this little tool today. It is a needle threader. I have definitely gotten to that point where my eyes seem to be not as strong or the eyes on the needle are much smaller. You guys ever used one of these needle threaders? They're really simple. So it's got a spot here, it says needle slot. You take the eye of the needle and you put it down into the slot. You see that? And then you have your thread slot here. I don't even cut the thread off my spool. I just go ahead and pull it out a little bit. I put it in my thread slot. Just hold it with my fingers and then it has this little lever that you push down nice and gentle and slow. And there's a mechanism that goes in through like this and it's going to push a prong and it's going to grab that thread and push it through the eye of your needle. Now don't pull it out super fast because it's not all the way through the eye, it's only partly through and you have to finish pulling it through. So when we pull it out, can you see how it's just got that loop that's going through? So you just grab that loop and then pull it through. Sometimes the loop is a little bit larger, sometimes the loop is a little bit smaller. And then you can decide how much thread you're gonna need and then cut it off the end of your spool. Now I do the simple knot where you just put it on your finger and you run it around once and then you roll your finger and thumb together and just slide that knot down. Sometimes I get a big knot, sometimes I get a small knot. You can always trim off that little bit extra that sticks out there. I do like to use a thimble. This one has a metal spot on it, which doesn't work for me because I tend to hit my needle down here. So I just spin it around and I use the leather side. It's got double thickness right here, so it still works as a good thimble. I have my two hexagons. These are one inch hexagons, meaning it measures one inch from this point to this point, not straight across. Straight across is usually double whatever the side is, but you'll find all that information down below in that playlist. So I'm gonna place these right sides together. I've always just held them with my fingers when I went and stitched them. 
you could put one of your little clover clips on and now also they have these fancy magnets they're little bars that you can put on here that's made to hold the fabric together and it holds it really super tight for you so it doesn't slide at all you can also use those you can wax your thread if you'd like i'm just doing a little practice one so i'm not going to worry about it too much okay let's get up nice and close i'm going to put my needle and we'll go from this side the red's a little easier to see i'm going to take my first needle i'm just going to bury my knot by going up into the little fold here and i want to stay really close to that corner I'm just going to come out right at the top there, just grabbing a little bit. Now to begin with, we're going to need to make a knot just the same way we do normally. So I will also come in the corner from this side, grab a little bit of the fabric, come back through to my red side, just grab a little bit of the fabric. You could put some thread conditioner or beeswax on your thread. And I just put my needle through the loop to create that knot. You're gonna to wanna to anchor it with a knot at any of these starting and stopping points. I also usually will put a knot in the center, but these are really tiny, kind of small. If you're going for a larger one, you might wanna put a couple knots like every inch or two, but since this is only one inch long, we can just put a knot in the middle or not put anything at all. Now, when we did the, the whip stitch, as I mentioned, we would just grab some fabric here and then whip it over and we would just constantly be sewing over and over. But for the invisible feather stitches, we want to move over just a little bit, grab just a couple of threads of the fabric, and when I'm coming up, I'm trying to run, I'm actually running my needle right across. What I'm using is the freezer paper. So if you have cardboard in there, it works really well. So you want to come out straight up towards the top. You don't want to come out anywhere in between the two pieces of fabric. You're definitely going to see the threads then, right? So I'm just going to grab a couple pieces there. Okay, and then I'll pull this through. You see my threads back down here? I just leave that hanging down there. And when I pull this through, it's a lot easier when you're not trying to do it zoomed in and looking through a camera but you wanna pull it so this is nice and tight. You don't wanna pull it so tight you're gonna break a thread, of course, but you wanna make sure that it's nice and tight. You can notice my threads in this one. You see how I did not pull it tight and I have those spaces and you don't want that. Now, of course, you're not gonna be pulling on all of your bits, but if you see, this one doesn't have it hardly at all. And then this was, I can't remember which was my third or my second try, but the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get and the better you'll get at it. So maybe with your first few, you might want to just do a little practice ones and maybe applique them onto a zipper pouch or a tote bag or a little table runner or something. And the more practice you get, then you can go ahead and create a piece for lay a pillow or a quilt or something. That way you know you've got enough practice in and that your seams are going to be all nice and strong. So then I'm gonna go, instead of going, I just came out the top here, then I'll move back to my blue side, and I'm gonna do the same thing right across from it. I'll grab just a little bit of the fabric, and I'll come straight up. Okay, pull my needle out. sure it didn't get tangled up on anything. I give it a nice little tug. Then I'm gonna come back to my red side. I'm gonna grab a little bit here. So if you've done the feather stitch in embroidery, it's really the same technique. Same stitch, just doing it a little bit different. Give it a nice little tug. Give it a nice little tug. Then I'll come over from my blue side again. Now I am going, as you see, I'm going from side to side, of course, but I'm not running my thread over and over and over against the top. So what I'm noticing is as I'm doing this, while I do have the thread that goes over the top, since I'm putting my needle in on this side and it's coming out at the top at that fold, that's gonna keep all of my thread, when I open this up, 
keeps all of my thread on the inside. Now, as you can see, you can see that very first knot there. That's just because of the way I had to tie it. Now, one little thread like that in an entire project isn't going to bother me. I can always practice and get a little bit more careful to make sure that I'm only staying on this side of the project and it's not going to peek through. And if you use thread that's going to match, it'll blend in or a nice blender thread, a neutral. So I come over across from it and I grab it. See that? Nice tug. And I just keep going and I'm letting my thread fall behind so that I'm not coming up this way. Because if I did that way, I mean, it would be fine, but I'm probably going to end up with some knots. See, now this one, I have to be careful because it's starting to come out on the inside. So I want to pull it back and make sure I'm only coming through on the outside of that blue. Nice tug. And I'm just going to keep following along. You can get a nice little rhythm going just like we do when we're sewing our EPP regularly. So maybe I want to put a little knot here just to keep it secure in case there's any type of thread breakage. It won't go all the way to the other areas. I just add a little knot on top. I come back. A little bit on the red. See, we're doing only, it's, it takes two motions to do this instead of just a one whip, whip, whip. And, um, peek. That came out on my blue. A little bit on the red. Just take small bites. Sure you give it a nice little tug. You can feel the stitches sink in to the fabric. And I don't ever feel that when I'm doing a whip stitch. And I feel like I have to put so many more stitches, almost like a satin stitch when I'm doing the whip stitch. But this one, I can just relax and just do one side and the other. Now, as you can see, I go ahead and I thread based mine. You can glue yours. And one on the red. Here's my last one on the blue. To the corner, go ahead and go through the loop twice, wrap it around my needle twice. Slowly pull it to where I get that nice little knot there. Now keep going and continuing. If you're going to go around in a in the hexagon circle, I would bring another piece in and put it down and just keep going. But I definitely want to make sure I have a knot at the beginning corner and the end corner. Even if you don't do anything in the center, you want to make sure that this is going to be your weakest point. So you want to make sure you get a good knot there and a good knot there. There you go. Look, no white threads at all. So I think that's a really great technique. I still have a lot on there. I do feel like I need a little bit of practice. I'd like to get them a little more evenly spaced. But I think they look really nice and it's really great. As I did, I used, as you saw, I used a white thread and I don't see anything there. It just takes a little bit of practice. So this is my fourth seam and I think it did really good job. You don't see as I tug on it a little bit, you don't see anything that's popping through. So I hope you give the invisible feather stitch a try. Let me know down in the comments how it worked out for you. If you made it all the way to the end of the video and you would like to use the code word in your comment, go ahead and use the word star. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.